In this lesson, we're going to learn about Microsoft Exchange. Specifically, we're going to learn about MX records. So what specifically is an MX record? Well, an MX record, which is short for Microsoft Exchange record, is a record that contains information about a mail server that uses Microsoft Exchange specifically. So that would be, for example, if your company had uh, created their own domain and had their own email server, the MX record would give us information about that particular server. Now, the reason this is useful is we can use MX records to verify that the mail server is configured properly. So we can actually go out on another computer and use what's called NSLOOKUP, which is a command prompt tool Windows, to look up the MX record to be able to verify functionality. Now, to do that, we would use the command prompt inside of Windows. So when you're in Windows, you would want to launch the command prompt. If you're in Vista or higher, you're going to need to run as an administrator, otherwise it may not work properly. So when you have your command prompt up, you're going to type the following. You're first going to type NSLOOKUP, you're going to hit enter, and when you do that, you're going to get a, another spot for you to type, and in that spot you're going to type server, and then the IP address of your external DNS server. Now this is not always required, however if you're doing testing internally you're going to want to do it this way, so you make sure that it is coming from the outside instead of the inside, because we obviously want to make sure that our server is able to reach outside as well. And then your next command after you hit enter is you're going to set Q to equal MX. Now what this does is it sets the query to equal MX records. So when you do this, make sure Q equals MX, otherwise you're just going to have regular records. Then you're going to hit enter, and then you're going to type in the domain name you want to look up. Now if we look at our example over here, We see that when we first put in NSLOOKUP, we got our default server for our DNS. This is the Roadrunner, as you can tell by the RR.com. Gave us our external address here. So when we typed in our server, we actually already had it. Um, you may need to get this information if it is not default uh, configured. And once we do that, it gives us that information confirms that it's correct. And then we set our query to equal MX. Now you may see sometimes for NSLOOKUP, instead of it saying set Q equals MX, you might see set type. Um, it's the same thing, it just means that you're querying for MX records. When you're using Linux, it's going to be pretty similar to type instead of Q. And here we have our option. We put in Google because it's a simple address we can look up. And when we did that, it gave us our DNS information. And then it gave us our Google information and gave us a bunch of pieces of information here. And how do we read that? Well, there's a couple things here. First, we want the primary name server. That's going to give us the uh, basic server that it goes to to find the MX record. So that could be their domain controller, usually their DNS. But for Google, it looks like it's ns1.google.com is their primary server. The next address you're going to get is the responsible mail address. This is where the mail exchanger actually is going to reside. So this is where they have everything configured. Now these next three pieces of information are based on that server. Now the serial, not something you're usually going to need. Refresh tells us that it's supposed to refresh all those records every two hours. Um, if there are any issues, it'll retry in about 30 minutes. Um, and the records will expire in 14 days. And that's kind of important because if there are any issues, you can try refreshing and it might force it to actually update 
If not, it may take a while for those records to expire, which means it may not update properly until it has expired. Now, the last piece of information here is the default TTL. That's your time to live. And here we see that it is actually in seconds, and it's going to be five minutes. Now, the reason that's important is when you look at time to live, it can either be in actual time, like seconds, or it can be in number of hops when you're talking about networking. So don't get that confused. Be cognizant of that. When you're looking at an MX record, it's going to be in actual seconds. So here you can see it's five minutes. And now I am actually going to show you a nice little demo so you can see what the prompt actually looks like. So here's our command prompt. As you can see at the top, we're running in administrator mode. That's important. Uh, this is a Windows 8 machine. It will look similar on 7 and Vista. Uh, XP will look the same. Uh, in XP, you don't have to actually tell it to run an administrator. Now, our first command we're going to do is NS lookup. And that's going to tell the computer that we want to go into our network services lookup utility. And as you see here, uh, as in the picture, you can see there's a default server and an address. This tells us what our DNS is currently uh, because this is a home computer. We don't have a lot of information here. And once we do our NS lookup, we're going to type in server and then our DNS, which this already gave us our DNS because we're on a home computer and we don't have a separate one configured. But if you're on your work network, you're going to have a different DNS number. So you want to make sure you know your external DNS. Once you put that in, we want to make sure we set our record. So we're going to set our query to equal MX, hit enter, and it'll give us another prompt. And we can choose what we want. We can try, let's say, uh, Google, like we did earlier and it brings up a record for us. So here we can see, just like we saw in the picture before, we've got a primary name server, which is ns1.google, our responsible mail address, which is our dns-admin.google, which it looks like that might also be a DNS server. Uh, some pieces of information here. The serial record number, our refresh. Uh, again, it looks like it takes about two hours for it to refresh records. It'll retry in 30 minutes if there's a failure. And records expire in 14 days. And our default time to live is going to be 300 seconds or five minutes. And that is an MX record. Thank you very much for watching.